Coven's a pretty cool character. We know his parents left him and he loves dogs. The question is though, can he beat his own game? Well, we're gonna try it with this rule set. And we love armor boss stiff. Therefore, if it faints, I'm counting it as a whiteout. And I'll tell you what, I think I got the look pretty close. I also decided to do it in Scarlet. That way I at least have one mum who didn't leave me. We then run into an imposter. Now this imposter has stolen my Karaidon's ball and I need it back. Thankfully, we make very short work of him and he knows we're not messing around. Therefore, he gives us the ball back. And at this point, I need to get my true starter. I run into a Squovert. After a few attempts at catching it, it does eventually stay in the ball. And that means it's time for our little croc to go in the bin. While grinding, I do run into this Tarantula and look, the poor little thing's bleeding. I can't just stick by and the best thing to do is put it out of its misery. Now, we've got the Nimona battle to start off with now that we've actually got a Pokemon that Arvin used. So let's get right into it. I decide the best thing to use is Bite. Now the Sprigato managed just to go through its entire move set in the three turns that it takes me to take it down. However, by the time it is down, I am obviously on low health, being at 17. Next up, we have to deal with the poor me. It uses Thundershock against me and knocks me down to one health as I retaliate with a bite and manage to do just under half. Normally here, I would say we had an Oren Berry equipped and we healed up all our health and could take it down. However, I was searching for ages and just couldn't find the Oren Berry Therefore, we do go down here. And although that is a whiteout, we can actually progress without needing to battle her again. Therefore, we can just carry on. Since we lost, I decide it's time to go and get some more teammates. First being Nackley. I then end up running into a Mashif. However, as far as I'm aware, Arvin never owned one of these. And now that we've got our beautiful little mushroom rock, we can get onto the KE battle. And I'll tell you what, I don't subscribe to the notion that super effective moves are gonna take me out. Therefore, I let them double kick me as I set myself up a rock polish. This allows me to smack both her nimble and her tarantula down six feet under. Her teddy ursa can just about take a smack down from us. And then he can get off a crit fury cutter, knocking me incredibly Low. It's not enough though. Unfortunately for him, I am faster thanks to that rock polish and we take him out. And there you have it. That is the first gym badge for us down. Now, normally we would be doing cloth here. However, I'm feeling a bit brave, so let's take on Bombardier. Damn, then plucks through some damage. And Smackdown, not so much. They obviously out damage me here. Therefore, I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board. Right, let's go to round two. And on this one, we're actually gonna be starting with Squover instead of Nackley. Pluck almost takes us out. However, we just hold on and that allows us to get a tail whip off. This is gonna lower the Bombardier's defense. Next turn, we are obviously gonna go down, but thank you for your service, Squover. Over. Look does insane damage again. However, after that defense drop and a crit on the smackdown plus terrestrialization, we almost one shot the bombardier. It then rock throws and knocks us down to just one HP. Lucky for us, that's all we need though. Bombardier is gonna go down on the next turn to a smackdown. At one HP, realistically, we should have lost it when we're fighting with Arvin. However, it just torments both of our Pokemon on each turn. Luckily, we were on the offensive both turns. Arvin uses a rock throw and we use rock throw as well. None of them missed and therefore the bombardier goes down without a hitch and we did all of that just so we could go for a bit of a paddle nah i'm just kidding we did all of that because we need to get a shelter but we need one at level 16 and without surf we can't get one it takes me a couple of attempts but i do eventually get one with the correct ability if that cool strategy isn't enough for you to subscribe i don't know what is and now the impossible cloth becomes possible shelter knows water gun the special attack on cloth is abysmal so we make very very short work of it i then grab a water stone and feed it into my shelter and it evolves into a cloister we then end up being against the grass trainer and that's gonna be brassius cloister and his high school spears make very short work of this gym though I can then get another Pokemon within the level cap, and that's gonna be a Toad School. With four members of our team, let's start taking on Team Star. The first one is gonna be Giacomo. His Ponyard does nothing with a Metal Claw, but my liquidation smashes him into the yellow. And obviously, next turn, he is gonna go down. Because he intimidated me, I chose to switch out, and I switch into Squovert, who actually manages to dodge a Metal Sound. 
We then lower each other's defenses, him with his metal sound lowering my special defense, and me with my tail whip knocking his physical defense down. He then knocks me out by using a snarl. I bring Cloyster out and he gets metal sounded on the next turn. I can then hit him with an icicle spear and it does some pretty big damage. I know I'm not gonna survive, therefore I switch out my Cloyster and I bring in Nackler who actually doesn't take as much damage from snarl as I was expecting. It uses yet another metal sound and from here i'm gonna use a smackdown and knock it to just over half health unfortunately for me though next turn is gonna be nackley's last turn after this i'm gonna send out my toad school now toad school knows screech therefore when it uses its metal sign we can screech back he then hits me with his wicked talk. Now, this thing would have been okay because I'd have got an attack off, but unfortunately, it puts me to sleep. This means we're not going to be able to hit it, and we do go down on the next turn. My last Pokemon is Cloyster, who tanks a snarl. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all that they wrote. I do like it when a plan comes together. Thank you, Cloyster. And that means that Squover is now ready to evolve into a Greedent. All that done is is going to mean we are now ready to take on the third gym leader being Iono. Watchrule doesn't do much with a spark as I managed to knock it into the yellow with a smackdown. Unfortunately for Watchrule, that does mean that it's going to go down on the next turn. Belly Bolt then comes in and I decide to switch into Toad School as I want to avoid a spark. However, she outthought me. She used a water gun against me. Now, water gun isn't doing much to me, so I decide to stay in and use a screech. Once it's at minus four defense, I end up switching out and I bring in the beefy boy that is Greedent. She ends up hitting me with a spark and unfortunately it does paralyze. However, I thought about this. I equipped a berry, therefore I'm going to cure myself of paralysis. However, Reedent's ability actually makes it so any berry it eats it gets health, so I'm on full health. And that does mean now, Belly Ball, it's game over. I use one earthquake and that is more than enough after the two screeches that I used to take it out. Luxio Spark doesn't do much, and then I hit it with an Earthquake, knocking it deep into the yellow. The same thing happens next turn, meaning the Luxio is gonna go down. Hermes Magius does hit me with a Confuse Rate. Obviously, that hits, and it does confuse me. I then hit her with a Bullet Seed, but I only hit three times, so I don't do too much damage to her. I'm then gonna switch out Greedon, and I'm gonna bring in Toad School. I've got a Ground Type and a Normal Type. Now, Hermes Magius only knows an attacking move that's electric, and ghost so i can avoid them i switch about until she's out of one of these moves the first one to run out of pp is hex therefore we can keep greedent in from there all we need is a couple of body slams and this magius goes down nakli is then ready to evolve but we're gonna stop it because Arvin never had a knuckle stack. Moving on to the next opponent, and that's gonna be Mela of Team Star and her fire types. She hits me for about a third with a flame wheel. I retaliate doing similar damage with an earthquake. We do this for about three turns, and I managed to hold on with just one HP, so she must have been doing just under a third. Unfortunately for her, I was doing just over and she goes down. Reverum then uses an overheat, which does manage to finish my Greedon off. It does come at the cost of her special attack being lowered though. Next up, we have Nackley. Now, he does manage to avoid a screech and then hit it with a smackdown. And this is a hard little rock. He manages to get three more smackdowns off. And because he's done so well, I decide instead of letting him go down, I'm going to switch out. The sun's gone, therefore it's safe to bring in Cloyster now. Cloyster will then tank at overheat quite well thanks to the special attack reduction from before and hit back with a liquidation she now knows she's defeated so she screeches me this allows me to use my last liquidation obviously i'm gonna wipe the floor with her and now it's time to take on everybody's favorite titan and that's obviously gonna be orthworm toad school gets headbutt for some pretty heavy damage and on top of that he flinches mm. orthworm then wraps me i don't know why he didn't take me out with headbutt but it wrapped me Thankfully, this allows me to get a screech off, though. Next turn, I am finally going to go down. My Greedent is then in, and this Orthworm is cracked. It flinches me yet again. Next turn, he does use a wrap against me, but he might as well have flinched me as I forgot about his Earth Eater ability going for an Earthquake. 
Next turn, he hits a headbutt and finally doesn't flinch me, so it allows me to get a tail whip off. I then can dodge an iron tail and manage to hit it with another tail whip. That's putting it at minus four defense total. It then wraps me. Now, this doesn't do too much damage, and I can retaliate with a body slam, which actually does some pretty okay damage. He then misses his next wrap, and this allows me to knock him into the yellow with yet another body slam. Next turn, he is finally gonna get the ability to take me out though from here all we need to do is use one liquidation and all swarm is finally down in away from the titans we now have the gym challenge again let's take on kofu and his water types i ended up equipping some loaded dice onto greedon even with that though the loser just manages to hold on obviously we're gonna get on the next turn and it does go down wood trio would go down to one if I could hit him, that is. However, I am going to hit him on the next turn, and it just takes three of these buggers, and then he goes down. Unfortunately for me, though, Crabominable can then use a Rock Smash, and that's Greedent going down. I can then use a Terrastalize Grass Knot with Toad School, and it does major damage to the Crabominable. Thanks to losing my Grass Type, I can just hold on against the Crab Hammer, and that does mean this Crabominable has gone down. One last Grass Knot, and bye-bye. Nackley, no, stop this. You're not allowed to evolve yet. I suppose you can go for it though toad's cruel because toad's cruel is incredibly awesome we then run into a skull villain now this thing would be useful but unfortunately for us it's one level too high for this level cap and that means we can now move on we're gonna face atticus of team star and i do get off an earth power which does amazing damage he then hits me with a toxic but no fear oh but where's my berry at i should be healed right now yep that means that's a loss wonderful we do the same on round two except this time i do actually equip the petra berry meaning that we're not poisoned taking down the skunk tank he however wasn't happy with this he sucker punches us does some pretty good damage might i add but we do manage to take him down however i didn't want this damage on us i do about half damage on an earth power to muck he hits me with a sludge wave and it doesn't really do too much we don't need to worry about anything else though because we do take it down on the next turn I also made sure I had enough speed EVs to outspeed this Reverum room so it can't touch me before I take it down. We then have the Starmobile come out and it does manage to Noxious Talk and take us out. Cloyster actually tanks the attack very well, but unfortunately for us, he does get poisoned. And on top of that, my Icicle Spear only does about a sixth damage. The poison damage stacked on top of the Noxious Talks does mean we go down one turn earlier than we should have. Our Greedon and Nackley just don't have enough damage to take it down, so that poison actually really did matter had it happened a turn later on the cloister we actually may have won this if it didn't happen at all we definitely would have won it third attempt we do take some more damage on the toad school but when we actually get to the rev room instead of going down this time i decide just to switch into nackley this is going to force him into using a spin out now this is going to drop his speed dramatically which is quite a good thing for us however nackley does hold on and i went for rock polish realistically i probably should have attacked with a smackdown However, he then flame charges, and this takes our Nackley out. But the most detrimental thing is it ups his speed. Not good for us. The Cloyster turn does actually end up working out the same as last time, except I don't get poisoned. This gives me three turns of Icicle Spears, meaning by the time Cloyster goes down, we've got him in the yellow. Because the Skunk Tank wanted to go aggressive and use two Sucker Punches on us instead of a Toxic, we can safely bring in our Toad School because we've got that berry to cure the poison. Unfortunately, though, even with the speed down, it's faster than us. Therefore, I go down anyway. Finally, our last Pokemon, Greedent, can use Terrasalite body slams for some pretty major damage while taking very little from them noxious talks next turn the rev room is gonna steal its own fate though what it's gonna end up doing is letting me proc my orange berry although that only gives me 10 hp my ability cheek pouch does bring me into the green this lets me get a body slam off this is going to knock it into the red and the toxic damage that's happening on us isn't that severe I can tank one more hit, even if it had been a crit, we'd have survived it, and that allows us to get off one last Terrastalize Body Slam. We might have done it by the skin of our teeth, but we did do it. We took down the Poison Starmobile in only three attempts. We finally can run into our buddy Mabostive under the level cap. We'll take good care of him. And now that we've got a full team, let's get back to the gym challenge. Let's fight Larry. Cloyster's liquidation ends up doing some pretty immense damage. And all the Kamala can do back is yawn at us. Next turn, the Kamala is obviously going to go down. However, it's used yawn and it's made us drowsy, putting us to sleep. Luckily, I thought about this and equipped a berry to solve that issue. 
to Dunsparce does end up taking less than half damage from a liquidation and it allows it to get off a glare paralyzing me. It's now faster so it can get a hyper drill off but it doesn't do as much damage as I thought it was going to. I then used Icicle Spear and thanks to a crit on the very first one we actually are able to take it down this turn. Liquidation wouldn't have done it so I played the right game here as we had five chances to crit. Facade ends up halving my current health and I hit back with an Icicle Spear which manages to knock him to about 60% HP. Unfortunately for me though, next turn Cloyster is gonna go down because it does 30 damage with its Facade. Mabostiff actually manages to tank it quite well and we can retaliate with a Crunch which knocks it into the red. And that is gonna mean on the very next turn, Star Raptor's going down and we're getting our fifth gym badge. I am now finally going to allow Nackley to evolve into a Knuckle stack. This is because we can now finally evolve into a Garganical because the level cap is high enough. That done is gonna mean we are ready for the sixth gym leader being Rhyme and her ghost types. I decide to use a sludge bomb into Mimikyu to break that disguise. However, it wasn't too happy. It'll slash my toad scroll right back. I then end up using a crunch into the Mimikyu, not quite taking it out, but knocking it so we can one-shot it. Binette ends up using an Icy Wind, which isn't great as it slows down both of our Pokemon. They end up using the exact same moves as last time, which puts my Toad Scroll on some pretty low health. I end up using a Sludge Bomb against the Mimikyu, who just holds on, and then my Bostiff with a Terrasalized Crunch will get Binette right on out of here. I decide it's time to switch out Toad Scroll into Scovillain, and I get hit with a Shadow Sneak, and also the Houndstone's gonna use Phantom Force. This isn't brilliant for me because it disappears when it uses Phantom Force and that's going to be my crunch misses. They end up attacking both of my Pokemon next turn, but it doesn't really matter. I can use Crunch with Scovillain to take out the Mimikyu and I can use Crunch with Mabostiff to take out the Houndstone. Now, Toxtricity will use Hyper Voice, finishing off my Scovillain. However, it doesn't matter. Mabostiff lived and he can Crunch and take out the Toxtricity. We then have the scary looking Great Tusk. However, I fear him not at all because my energy ball actually ends up one-shotting him. After this, we do end up having the Tulip battle. Seventh gym? You'd think it'd be a challenge, right? Well, not for someone like Arvin. We've got our big woofy boy. He knows Crunch and he's dark type. Combine that with a bit of terrestrialization and a flurry of crunches, we take down every single one of our Pokemon. My Karaidon then ends up becoming like a ghost or an ice type or something during the next gym challenge. Good on you, pal. And we might as well take on the final gym, the eighth one being Grusha with his ice types. Wide Lens, Scoville, and can't miss Firefang, so Frostmoth is going to go down to one of them. I use the same against Bertic, and I'm finally on the other end of a flinch. It's brilliant. This made it more than free to take it out. Satayan is going to do amazing damage to me with an ice spinner. However, I don't do too much to it because it has the thick fat ability. By taking advantage of terrestrialization, I can survive another ice spinner and then on top of that i use fire fang not only does it do some decent damage thanks to the boost but i get burn off and then i'm gonna switch into cloister because cloister can take any of the moves that this titan has this is gonna mean on the next turn the titan will go down to my rock blast his last pokemon is his altaria the hurricane does immense damage to me but it's not quite enough to take me out allowing me to get a rock blast off which is gonna hit five times and do some amazing damage back to the altaria cloister's done its job make your debut garganical use a body press to take down this altaria and win us all eight badges gym challenge done is gonna mean we've got to take on Team Star. The first one we're gonna fight is Ortega. Azumarill ends up being faster and uses a bounce against us. This is gonna cause us to miss our spore. I end up thinking I'm gonna be a fool if I keep him in, so we'll bring in Cloyster. However, he ends up missing the bounce, so I actually should have stayed in. The best move I can use here is going to be Rock Blast. As you can see, my moves aren't exactly anything amazing, so that's what I go for. Obviously, I hit for about a third, and it hits back with a play rough. Next turn, I use a Rock Blast again, but this time, one of them does actually crit. This is going to allow me to take Azumarill out on this turn. Now, next up, we're going to have Wigglytuff. Although the Icicle Spear does look like it's going to take it out, unfortunately, it does survive in the red. It then play roughs us and unfortunately lowers our attack. 
I'm not a big fan of this. Therefore, I bring Cloyster out and we bring Toadscrew back in who manages to tank a gyro ball. A sludge bomb from here will end up taking the Wigglytuff out. Dashbone takes good damage from a sludge bomb, but it's play rough and hits back almost as hard. Due to us being faster, it does end up going down on the next turn. Next up is the Starmobile, and it will take us out with a magical talk. Scovillain does take the magical talk quite well, and it ends up doing some decent-ish damage with an energy ball. It then ends up using a seal roller, which does almost no damage, and actually gets rid of its fairy terrain. We then hit with another energy ball and do some okay damage again. I then end up getting Confuse Raid on the next turn. Now, I was going for a Fire Fang with Terrestrialization to do a chunk of damage, but unfortunately, I hit myself in Confusion. Now, I know I'm not going to survive, therefore, I switch into Greedon, who tanks a Magical Talk decently. He loves me so much, he dodges the Confuse Raid, and then we can hit it with a Tail Whip. It then ends up using a Magical Talk next turn, doing some pretty severe damage. I just Tail Whip again. He then switches back to you using Confuse Ray, and I'm not as lucky this time round. I am going to hit myself this time. Next turn, I am knocked into the red by the Starmobile, but I am able to get a Body Slam off now, and it does some pretty amazing damage because of them defense drops. After this, Greedon will end up going down. After this, all we need is a couple of Earthquakes and the Starmobile will fall. Garganical is bulky enough where it didn't stand a chance and couldn't KO it. And this is it. We have one last Titan phase to take on. The Dundozo part of this honestly doesn't worry me whatsoever. I do some pretty insane damage with an Energy Ball and he targets Greedon. Then Greedent uses Takedown, and that's going to knock him in range of going down. Now, Tatsugiri, honestly, I wasn't too scared of. I thought I could just switch in Cloyster and we'd be fine. Plus, it misses its Muddy Water on the switching. But a Dragon Pulse is a clean KO on Cloyster. Luckily, Garganical with his little balloon for floating in the water, Body Press, and a little bit of damage from Takedown on Greedent is enough to finish Tatsugiri off. The imposter does manage to finally get a user pull Mabostiff, but he should have just kept it safe. And now we are going to have the last team star member being Airy, but her fighting types are scary. After terrestrialization, I can survive a poison jab and I can take the Toxicroak out with a Zen Headbutt. The Simeon will come out and it'll close combat me, which will take me out, but also does lower both its defenses. Mabostiff then uses Psychic Fangs, which doesn't quite take him out. It can close combat me. On top of that, it crits, and that is going to mean Mabostiff goes down, and that's a white out. I wasn't really happy with my strategy. It just didn't feel like it had enough there to win. Therefore, what I end up doing is getting some performance enhancers. It unfortunately was nowhere near enough though. I do end up trying a few more times and I keep losing. I need to think of another strategy. We need to get our friendship up. This will allow us to maybe dodge attacks, maybe get crits, and maybe survive on one HP. I think it's the only way we can win this. I am going to end up losing a few more times. And by a few, I mean a hell of a lot, actually. But on a couple of the runs, I do get it into the red. And on one of them, I get it onto a sliver. So I know this is going to be possible. Scovillain Zen Headbutt will one-shot the Toxicroak. And we don't get hit because of being faster. Simeon does get hit for just under half of the Zen Headbutt. But this time, it's close combat can't kill us. I also have a berry to put myself on higher health to stop other attacks from hitting me. And unfortunately for Eri, them defense drops are going to cost her as Persimian will go down. And I lay up next and i know it will take us out therefore we're going to switch into cloister as it can just about survive a close combat we are going to end up losing cloister on the next turn but at this point we've managed to get annihilate to drop its defenses twice scoville and can then come back out as zen headbutt knocks it into the red not quite enough to take out and it does finish us off with a close combat. Mabostiff being a little bit faster can crunch and take the Annihilate out. Firefang will do great damage to the Lucario and it'll Aura Sphere, but the Aura Sphere isn't enough to knock us out. That is going to lead to a Firefang finishing off Lucario on the very next turn. Obviously, Mabostiff will be knocked out, so we need to switch him, and I decide to switch into Greedent. Greedent manages to survive a combat talk on 1 HP and not even a friendship 1 HP. This allows me to eat my wiki berry and then use cheek pouch and I get out of range of being KO'd. 
this is in turn going to let me get a tail whip off. Thanks to the heals we got on the previous turn, we survive on 25 HP and knock it down to minus two with another tail whip. Thanks for your service, Greedon, and this is where we bid you adieu. Toad's Cruel is going to come out now, and he's going to shift gear. It's going to up its speed and attack. However, we're going to hit with an Earth Power and get lucky enough to drop its special defense. It'll do the exact same thing next turn, and I've actually put the Metronome item on. So on top of that drop special defense, I also get a 10% boost every time I use Earth Power. Next turn, it is going to attack me. However, it can't one-shot me. Therefore, I can knock it very low. Toad Scroll will finally go down here, though. She ends up shift gearing me. Now, this is going to allow me to get an Earthquake off, but because of its stamina effect, it does have enough defense to just survive. She then throws on the next turn, making it the last turn, and we can take her out. Turns out the friendship didn't impact this whatsoever, so it was doable without it. Even though I'm underleveled, the Clavel fight isn't too tough, so I decide let's go and do it anyway. His Oranguru really doesn't stand a chance. We use one to rasalize Crunch, and it's gone down. I then firefang the Abominus Snow, and I decide to do this because obviously four times effective. It'll use Aurora Veil and up its defenses. I then make a slight misplay. I use Crunch. And it's just not enough to take Abominus Snow out. So that allows it to use Blizzard. Firefang would have taken it out and I just misplayed completely. But we do take it out next turn regardless. Mabostiff will not survive a Fire Blast. Therefore, I need to switch out. I choose to switch into Cloyster. However, it turns out a Flyer Blast is enough to one hit KO it. Garganical obviously doesn't take much damage from a Dark Pulse, and a Stone Edge is going to wipe the floor with Houndoom and take it out. Against the Moongus, I set up Stealth Rocks. This is because I can't do enough damage to it that it wouldn't get back from the Giga Drain, because you can see the Giga Drain does mental damage to me. I then Earthquake, expecting to go down. However, it decides to use Spore. An ability that I've got means I can't be put to sleep by Spore. I am now going to get another Earthquake off, and I actually knock it quite low. But unfortunately for me, it's going to Giga Drain the rest of my health away, and Garganical is finally going to fall. My boss diff can then crunch, and it is going to finish Amoongus off. But unfortunately for me, I am going to get poisoned due to its effect spore. Now, Poltergeist can't stand a chance against us. It goes down to one crunch. And at this point, the poison tick is going to knock me down health, and I am actually going to heal with my Wiki Berry because I've been knocked so low. Even with the heal, Quaquavel will actually take me out. Therefore, I decide to bring in my Greedon. Unfortunately, a Brick Break does do major damage, though. And that is going to mean that I do end up going down here. Toad Scroll comes out, but unfortunately for us, Ice Spinner being four times effective does take us out. And that is going to mean that Quaquavel can Aqua Step our Skull Villain, nearly take it out. And even though we Energy Ball, it's not quite enough to take it. And that is going to mean that we go down. And on top of that, he's managed to get his speed up twice. Obviously, this is letting him outspeed my Mabostiff. And that does mean I am going to white out here. The second time round, I literally just don't make the misplay against the Abominus Snow. And I don't get poisoned by Poison Point. And that is going to seal me the victory against Clavel. Honestly, it was that easy, and I shouldn't have lost the first time realistically. This imposter then decides to follow me into my mother's lab. Now, the place is abandoned. This isn't something that an imposter should be with me for. And just because of that, we have to take the guy down. First turn, I get Garganical to set up some Stealth Rocks, as this Greedon actually does some pretty good damage with an Earthquake. I then use Body Press, and I knock it to about half, as it knocks me into the red with another Earthquake. That was a very un timely crit from him but thankfully i thought of a solution i had a berry equipped and that allows me to heal some health his greedon will just hold on but i will do the same thanks to my healing and that's gonna mean next turn it is bye bye greedon his toad scroll earth powers but we hold on thanks to the power of friendship and that is gonna allow us to get a body press off but he doesn't do too much damage Next turn, I do go down, though. That's it. Bye-bye, Garganical. I do take big damage from a Sludge Bomb, but I can finish him off with a Fire Fang. I then Energy Bore his Garganical, and I do decent damage, and he misses a Stone Edge. 
That is going to mean on the very next turn, Garganical is going out of here. I do end up losing the battle of the Skull Villains because I hit a Fire Fang and he hits a Fire Blast. Obviously, Fire Blast will finish me off. Next turn, we are going to finish Skull Villain off with a Sludge Bomb. Next up, he has his Cloister. Toad Skull will go down here. Therefore, I'm going to switch into my own Cloister, who tanks an Icicle Spear. Fabulously, might I add. He ends up using Liquidation. I'm assuming he's trying to lower my defense, but it's not going to save him from the Onslaught that's coming. You know my Rock Blast is coming, and it almost takes him out. I didn't want to use Rock Blast again just because it has a chance of missing. Therefore, I thought, oh, he's low enough. My Icicle Spear will finish him off. Well, he's not low enough. He manages to survive it on a Slither. Next turn, however, he is going to have his life ended. The Mabostiff almost KOs us with a crunch, but not quite. And that allows us to get a liquidation off for some decent damage. Unfortunately, next turn will mean we lose our Cloister. Toyd School then comes out, and I'll tell you what, it would have died to this crunch, but friendship powers us through. That allows us to get our spore off and put it to sleep. And it loved its sleep far too much. It doesn't end up waking up and it takes me three earth powers to take the bugger down. Now, the next fight I end up doing is going to be the penny fight. However, I don't know if you've noticed, my team is kind of stacked. Penny's team full of evolutions. Now, although I like evolutions, they're just not that brilliant if they have nothing backing them up. They're decent if they've got a bit of backup, but purely Evolutions is not a team that's too strong. Therefore, I'm not even going to bother talking through it, as we have that much consistency, this battle would be unlosable. That being done is going to mean that we are now ready to take on the Elite Four. The first member of which is going to be Rika and her ground types. Wish Cash is going to fall to one energy ball thanks to it being four times effective. Then what's going to happen is I'm going to switch out when Donphan comes out and I'm going to switch into Cloyster who can tank the Stone Edge. And I've got to say, it's incredibly unlucky for Rika. I've equipped an Expert Belt, therefore my super effective moves are doing more damage. I have super effective moves for all of her Pokemon, so we sweep through the entire thing that being done let's move on to the next fight being poppy and her steel types what we're gonna do now is we're both gonna end up setting stealth rocks up against each other i'm then gonna go for the super effective earthquake as they go for the super effective high horsepower that is gonna mean one more earthquake is all it takes and the caparaja is going down now, against the Bronzong, I decide to bring Garganical back and I switch into Mabostiff, who doesn't take much damage at all from the Iron Head. Mabostiff is now holding that Expert Bell and a Crunch makes short work of the Bronzong. Expecting a Body Press, I can't keep Mabostiff in as I will be one shot. Therefore, I bring out Garganical, but I called it wrong. They go for Iron Defense. This may be an issue. It ends up using another one as I actually miss my Stone Edge. And unfortunately for me, a Body Press will take me out at this health. Skull Villains to Rastalize Fire Fang does so little damage, but it retaliates with a Brave Bird, and that's actually going to injure itself and me in the same time. I end up Fire Fanging again, knocking it into the red, and thankfully, Friendship pulls through. I dodge the Body Press. And that means we got a bit lucky, but we can take the Corviknight out. I also had Metronome equipped, and this is my fourth Fire Fang, meaning that it's enough to take Magnazone out. And then all that's left is Tinkerton. It cannot survive an attack from us, so we have somehow won this battle. That Corviknight we got lucky against, but thankfully we just pulled through. Next up, we've got Larry and his newly acquired birds. I equipped a Choice Scarf to be faster, and this means I'm going to one-shot the Tropius with an Icicle Spear. Star Raptor's Intimidate makes it where I won't one-shot, therefore I switch into Garganical, who takes a close combat like a champ. I am able to survive another close combat, and that's going to allow me to set up some Stealth Rocks. Since they're all flying type, they'll take good damage from it. Garganical will then go down to the third close combat, but at this point, Staraptor's defenses are incredibly weak. 
And with that, the Elite Four will go down to one cloister. And it's all been leading up to this. The battle versus Gita. Mabostiff is going to manage to tank a Dazzling Gleam pretty well. But my Crunch cannot be tanked by the Espathra. And it goes down. Against Gogo, I'm not staying in. I decide to switch into Scoville and who dodges a play rough. I then fire fang it, which actually nearly ends up taking it out as it just uses bulk up. That bulk up was pointless though, because it's going down on the next turn. Against King Gambit, I decide to switch in Garnacle. That's because he will shrug off a stone edge. I then get hit with an iron head, but I do get flinched. Garganical then makes up for the flinch by surviving thanks to friendship. But he does get flinched again. I then manage to hold on just a bit again. Go on, Garganical. Finally, he hits the body press for some good damage. He then dodges the stone edge. He's really putting in some work here. And that means King Gambit will go down. I then end up using a stone edge against the Avalug. It uses a crunch, but Garganical isn't finished. It holds on yet again. <laughs> He then gets off one last Stone Edge. He's done so brilliantly, but this is his last turn. Toad Scroll will now come out and one Earth Power will finish off the Avalug. To be honest, it'd have probably knocked it from full health, so it really didn't matter what happened last turn. Power Whip will then one shot the Veluza. It's an incredibly powerful attack and it's the first time we've actually managed to use it. Lastly is her Glamora. This thing can survive one Earth Power, but it can't touch us. Therefore, all it takes us is two of these Earth powers and we have defeated Gita. After this, we do have the Nimona fight. However, again, not worth commentating over because as is the case in this entire run, we wall the majority of her team. We can survive any attack giving us switch-ins and then we got super effective moves to one-shot the majority of them. And that means one last thing. It's time for us to finally go on to Area Zero and face our mother. Turns out it's an AI though. This means we're not getting any closure. I'm a bit mad though, so let's take her down. I end up terrestrializing using Fire Fang and then she uses a lunge, which I tank brilliantly. This will mean on the next turn, Slitherwing is gonna go down to one more of my little fangs. Fire Fang does amazing damage to Brute Bonnet and it retaliates with payback. This normally would have knocked me out. However, friendship is here to save the day again. This does mean it's going to go down on the very next turn. Sandy Shocks is the next Pokemon out. It's gonna use an Earth Power against me and unfortunately that is the end of scoville for this run toad school does some great damage with an earth power but not enough to ko it allowing it to use flash cannon but that barely touches us obviously it will end up falling on the very next turn i end up using a sludge bomb now this will poison the scream tail However, it's then going to use an Ice Punch against me, and that Ice Punch is going to freeze me. Toad School doesn't care, though. He thaws out, gets off another Sludge Bomb, and then on top of that, dodges the incoming attack. This is going to make it free. Next turn, obviously, Screamtail is going to go down. Fluttermane finally finishes us off by using a Mystical Fire against us. She Thunderbolts Garganical for minimal damage as I hit a Stone Edge, nearly taking her out. She again does no damage to us. However, this time, I don't want to risk a miss. I've switched to Earthquake, and that's going to be bye-bye Fluttermane. Roaring Moon is then going to finish us off with an Earthquake of its own. I'm then going to bring out my Bostiff. This is because he knows Intimidate, so it'll lower the attack of roaring moon i then end up switching into my cloister who actually takes next to no damage from a dragon claw it decides it wants the stone edges we can hold on i think we could have even survived a crit after that i icicle spear now at this point you see how much damage i'm doing guaranteed to hit five so you know i have won we've beaten the game as arvin